At the World Economic Forum meeting in Davos, India is making a significant impact and a name with six of its states, Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra and Kerala representing the nation all under one roof. Union Minister Ashwini Vaishnav, who is heading the Indian delegation, had an exclusive conversation with the Time Network's uh, managing editor Mihir Bhatt, revealing that the first Made in India semiconductor chip will roll out this year itself. We are at World Economic Forum Davos and I have a very special guest with me. Actually, the star attraction of India Pavilion, Sri Ashwini Vaishnav Union Minister is with me. Sir, thank you so much for joining us at uh, Times Network and congratulations, India is buzzing. Uh, and also, I must congratulate you because uh, we have a unified India Pavilion and you have brought all states together. Uh, that's a commendable uh, initiative. Uh, what is your sense about uh, World Economic Forum this year? Uh, you are right, absolutely. Our Prime Minister guide it is that uh, we should have a unified India pavilion which should be integrated. So this time all the states are integrated within the India pavilion. So that has given us a very good way of uh, uh, sharing the way our economy is growing today, sharing the policy certainty, sharing the transparency and the strong foundation that our Prime Minister is laying for the country. Right. Sir, we have seen for past couple of years, India actually remains the most buzzing um, country at World Economic Forum. This year is no different uh, and, and we have seen so, ma so much of excitement about uh, the new initiatives that Government of India is undertaking. What is your key messaging to global community which is present here? Uh, three major things. First is uh, there is a lot of confidence about India, the consistency of our growth, the consistency of our policy, the consistency with which our Prime Minister Shri Narendra Modi ji is creating that huge trust in the uh, India's economy as well as India's foreign policy. So these two, uh, these two factors are playing very well. The second is the technological base that our Prime Minister has created over the last 10 years whether it is digital public infrastructure, whether it is semiconductors, the AI mission, the telecom, the defense equipment, the strides in quantum, all that is being noticed. Third is the comprehensive way with which our Prime Minister is approaching the uh, policy paradigm. For example, environment, is it, it, should that be taken as this versus that? Or should that, should that be taken as, yes, it's a very integral part of our life. So those are the things which people have taken big note of. Right. Sir, I have spoken to uh, you know many investors who are present here, many economists. There is huge overhang about the incoming U.S. administration and uh, how Trump, Trump 2.0 will play out on global stage for global economy. Uh, I think he has already sort of indicated and hinted that uh, if the BRICS nations uh, don't really offer a favorable policy, then he is willing to impose 100% tariff also including on countries like India, is it just a hawkish statement or would you want to read more into it? See, one major thing which is there between Indian, uh, India and U.S. relationships, hmm. that is the uh, factor of trust. Right. Um, whether it is developing technologies, co-developing products, finding new solutions using technologies, and approaching the global affairs, geopolitical affairs from a very practical and uh, very uh, independent point of view. All those factors uh, are very relevant in our discussions in the way we should evaluate, way, the way we should read the signals which are coming out from the uh, new administration in U.S. And I think it's going to be a win-win for both. Right. Uh, there is a lot of focus on uh, new technology, you know, semiconductor, blockchain, industry 4.0. We have seen here there is a lot of buzz about that. India is obviously at the forefront uh, in terms of uh, emerging technologies. How would you want to, uh, going forward, push this agenda in India? We have had very good roundtables with the semiconductor uh, uh, participants mm -hmm. with the AI uh, companies, with uh, cr critical mineral companies, all of them have shown a lot of interest in our uh, programs and all of them are basically very keen to participate in the way we are uh, uh, developing these programs. So I would say that in the coming days, a lot of emphasis will be there on designing chips, on getting specific focused models, on making sure that the critical mineral supply chain is properly uh, 
manage the resilience in supply chains will be a major issue, major factor. So all these factors are being discussed here and uh, people see our country, India, as a very important uh, player in it and a very important contributor to it. Right. Do you think the, the, the reservations that US has about technology transfer, high-end technology transfer to China, and I, I mean, obviously there are some uh, frictions which are obviously going to take place between these two countries when it comes to emerging technologies or uh, high-end technology, how India can benefit from On that? On the contrary, I can see that there is a lot of effort and a lot of agreement on co-developing new technologies. Co-developing new technologies using the talent pipeline that we have, that is definitely a major uh, uh, trend we can see. For example, in the case of uh, uh, telecom technologies, in case of semiconductor uh, technologies, there is a lot of co-development activities which are going on. Hmm. Right. Uh, Coming back to India, currently, uh, you know, I mean, we have seen a bit of a pickup in private uh, capex. We obviously need to increase the growth momentum in India. There are some concerns about consumption pace in India right now. How would, would you want to uh, sort of really be alarmed about it? Listen, our growth, our our growth strategy is based on some very deep thinking, and uh, we can say that the growth will remain consistent for the next uh, many years because the foundation that has been laid for this growth is very firm. It's very firm and uh, the, uh, the programs which are implemented based on this strategy are being executed in a very clear, methodical way. So I would say that the growth is going to remain firm. Yes, there will be seasonal variations, there will be quarter to quarter variations. Those will happen in any economy. But the overall uh, consistency is there. Right. Do you suspect some sort of volatility as far as global growth is concerned thanks to the uh, uncertainty that prevails on the trade policy and geopolitics? Geopolitics will definitely play a play an important role in the variations in the economic growth. Those will, those will always happen. Um, but the overall consistency in the economic policy is very clear. Right. I was speaking to some of the state representatives who are part of India Pavilion. Uh, while they were very happy that it's a unified pavilion, some of them did express uh, a desire to work, maybe uh, gain more support from central government and work more collaboratively. Is it just a political statement or uh, would you like to say something about it? No, the collaboration is huge. For example, the Tamil Nadu minister who is representing Tamil Nadu here, uh, we had a very good discussion and he was very happy with the way we have got the electronics industry uh, developed in Tamil Nadu. Uh, same is the case of uh, Andhra and Telangana. So I think that it's, it's even Kerala was very happy with the approach that we have taken. So I think I think the collaborative approach that our Prime Minister has taken is very good. Right. That's highly appreciated. Right. Sir, if you have to sum it up, your visit to Davos uh, and give a message to global investing community, what would that be? Listen, India is in a very clear, consistent growth path. The talent pipeline is very strong. Our Prime Minister's policy uh, policies are very stable. So this is the right time to invest in India. Right. And one last question on semiconductors. It remains one of the high-end technologies where India has huge potential. And I'm sure you're personally driving uh, that agenda for India. Uh, what holds uh, in the future for semiconductor space so in India? Very good, uh, very high level of confidence in India's semiconductor program. Just three years ago when we had announced the program here in, in Davos, people were kind of evaluating uh, and in this short time frame of three years, we have five units which are getting constructed. The first made in India chip will roll out this year. So there is a lot of confidence in our efforts. Uh, people appreciate the fact that uh, Honorable Prime Minister met in a, for almost one and a half hours, two hours with all the global CEOs of semiconductor companies and people have taken that message very uh, seriously and uh, I just had a meeting with the CEOs of uh, semiconductor companies. Each and every part of the ecosystem is coming to India. Right. Well, on that note, thank you so much for uh, joining thank us, you. sir. Thank you so much. Thank you.